watching 30 Minutes. Justice for Ying Ying Zhang from WCIA 3 News. Ying Ying Zhang hadn't been missing for long when her family and boyfriend flew in from China. They were desperate to find her, and Brent Christensen was just as eager to watch it all play out. On June 29, 2017, 20 days after Ying Ying Zhang went missing, her family, friends, and colleagues planned a walk in concert dedicated to her. Brent Christensen had been following news reports about the case closely, and he decided he would go to the walk. He texted his girlfriend, Tara Bullis, asking her to go with him. She didn't want to at first, but being the submissive in the relationship, she agreed to meet him there. Let's find Ying. Let's find Ying. Bullis was secretly recording their conversations. At one point, Christians had said something about everyone being there for him. When she realized what he was telling her, she went to the bathroom to email the FBI. <laughs> no one you know what happened. Christensen was drinking rum from a water bottle as he began to reveal more to Bullis. Eventually, he says he's the one who made Ying Ying Zhang disappear. I to her, so I just started doing stuff to her and I choked her. For it's been 10 minutes. I carried her into my bathroom. That's the bat. And I hit her on the head as hard as I could. And it broke her head open. So I. <laughs> But that's not all. Christensen brags to Bullis that he's killed 12 other people over the years and tells her he's a serial killer who lives a double life. He's just the only person that has produced evidence that he's back. There's a number that will be enough. My legacy. After the walk, Bullis says she was terrified. She turned her recordings into the FBI, never telling Brent what she was up to. Christensen's visit to the memorial walk sealed the deal. The FBI knew they had their suspect, but what they wanted was to find Ying Ying. Brent Christensen was arrested on June 30th, 2017, his 28th birthday. State police and FBI teams executed another search warrant at his apartment. They started by taking pictures of the way it was, two twin beds pushed together and covered with one sheet, bondage equipment on the floor, a baseball bat, cleaning supplies, Drano, baking soda, and large garbage bags. Then they sprayed the carpet walls and several items with luminol, a compound that will fluoresce if it detects certain substances, such as cleaning chemicals. Several patches of carpet glowed, so did spots on the walls, the entire bathtub, and the mattress. The mattress also had some blood stains on it. A spot of carpet below the mattress glowed, so investigators cut it out and looked underneath. There was a blood stain. Investigators found out Christensen had put in an apartment maintenance request for mold cleaning in the bathroom. As they continued to dissect the unit, a cadaver-sniffing dog alerted to underneath the bathroom vanity. Teams removed the entire vanity and the pipe underneath it. By this time, they'd had custody of Christensen's Saturn Astra for more than two weeks. Luminol spray revealed he cleaned it extensively, especially the passenger side door. Pieces of his apartment were sent off to the FBI lab in Quantico, Virginia to be tested for DNA. Investigators had already obtained Zhang's DNA profile using a toothbrush and other items found in her apartment at Orchard Downs. Her DNA was found on Christensen's mattress, his carpet, and on the baseball bat in his apartment. The FBI announced Brent Christensen was charged with kidnapping and that they believed Ying Ying Zhang was no longer alive. A grand jury indicted him 12 days later. He pleaded not guilty. Three months later, he was slapped with a new indictment, claiming that his alleged kidnapping also resulted in Zhang's death and that he lied to the FBI about his actions. It would be two years before Christensen's trial started. A lot happened in that time, including Christensen's team withdrawing the possibility of a mental health defense. All the while, Ying Ying Zhang was still missing. Up next, the trial finally starts, and on the first day, defense lawyers say something no one saw coming.